the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Glory be to the Holy Trinity, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, now forever and to the age of all ages, Amen. Uh, we've heard that our Lord Jesus Christ testifying that the greatest, no one greater uh, in the born among women more than John the Baptist. So who would like to be John the Baptist? See, no one wants to be John the Baptist. All of us want to be Baptist. Sure? So you're ready to be beheaded like John the Baptist too? <laughs> because it's, we have both. We cannot have one without, without the other. Uh, John the Baptist was a well-known prophet uh, in the time and, Jesus, and was feared. Was feared. And there was a prophecy about him uh, to his father, Zac who was, whom we have his commemoration today. And uh, uh, Zechariah, the prophet, uttered the prophecy that this would be the prophet of the Most High who would prepare the way before the Lord uh, through straightening out the heart. Straightening out the heart. And actually very interesting, to, as I, I, I tried to, to, to hint in the, in the Synexarium, that the ritual of baptism was existent in the life of, in the, in, of the Jewish people in terms, in the, in the form of purifications and in some aspects, full immersion by water. To be immersed fully, immersed fully in the, in the water, to be purified. We, uh, 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 we know that in uh, Exodus 30, uh, the Lord said to Moses, make a bronze basin uh, with its bronze stand for washing. Place it between a tent of meeting and the altar and put water in it. Aaron and his sons are to wash their hands and feet with water from it. Whenever they enter the tent of meeting, they shall wash with water so that they will not die. They shall wash with water so they shall not die. So it's a washing that signifies cleansing from inside so if you if you have germs and you wash it with water would this clean the germs in our hand in your hand no you remember the time of covid they say you have to wash it for 20 seconds with uh, with soap and with water and consistently to really it was annoying yes maybe uh, 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 but this was the way so the washing here is not purification from germs but it is and dirt. It is purification from inside. So it's a manifestation. And actually until today, like in the liturgy, before the beginning of the liturgy, the priest washes his hand, not the feet, washes the hand and utters a psalms, Lord, wash me that I shall be made whiter than snow. So it's a time for the priest before the liturgy to kind of give account before the Lord to offer his repentance and purification in a consistent and continuous basis to offer repentance before the Lord. So Aaron was supposed, and his sons who were to serve, they were supposed to come and wash their hands and their feet, otherwise they will, they will die. What is the significance? The significance is when we appear before the Lord, we need to be clean from inside, not from outside only, from, from inside. And we remember also a story in the Old Testament of someone who was uh, immersed in water seven times to be cleansed. Do you remember who that person is? Naaman, the Syrian, when he had leprosy on his skin. And a servant girl, told him, I wish that you would go to the prophet of the Lord. So he made a huge journey to the prophet in, 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 in Israel. And when he went there, he told him, you know the Jordan River? Yes. Go wash seven times. So wash doesn't mean just to wash what? Dip yourself. Take a dip seven times. So he wondered, well, why would I need to do this? Why would I need to do this? I could have done this when I'm staying in my kingdom. And maybe I have rivers cleaner than this river and better and, well, and, and so what. But he did it and he was, and he was cleansed. So it became, so because this is part of the customs at that 
at that time. And the, 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 the Jewish people started to create baptism. They called them mikvah. Mikvah means a, a gathering or a pool of water. And tracing this, it has many references in the Bible. Even it goes back to the book of Genesis when the Lord said, like the, the gathering of the water together, like a pool of water gathered together to signify this has to be done for the for cleansing, for the for the washing. So John the Baptist appeared and he was baptizing people. So people come to him and he would baptize them. What does baptism here mean? It means that they admit people from all Judea. We read this in Matthew 3 and in Luke 3 as well. People came to John the Baptist to be baptized. What does baptism mean here? It means that they admit their sins, that they have iniquities. I have sinned. I want to be forgiven. So they go, they go, and they go to the river, and they are dipped, immersed completely in the water, and again, this was not something new that John the Baptist invented, but it was in their culture, it was in their tradition to do this, and it has a meaning. They understood the meaning of to be washed and to be baptized, be fully immersed in water. So even their hair, everything they have to wash in what they have to be completely immersed in water and come out, admitting their sins. And many people came. Many people came to uh, uh, John the Baptist to be uh, baptized, standing, but they did not take any actions. So John said to the crowd coming out to be baptized by him, you brought a viper. Who was he talking to? To all the people? No, he was talking to the specifically the Pharisees. Why the Pharisees? Because the Pharisees, they thought, I am pure already. I do not need to be cleansed. So they maintain the ritualistic aspect to clean the outside of the body and they kept the inside. They did not care about the inside. And that's why he said, you are brought a viper. There is someone coming. The axe is already at the root of the tree. Where is the fruit? If you say that you are clean, where are the fruits? Where are the fruits of your repentance? And many people came and answered and, and asked, what should we do? John answered, anyone who has two shirts should share with the one who has none. And anyone who has food should do the same. So this is fruit manifestation. So a baptism or repentance does not mean just to have a, a, a guilty feeling. It doesn't, it doesn't mean that I feel bad about my sins and stop. It means that I take an action to do something. So if I am keeping things to myself, no. If I have two of everything, I give. So share with those who are less fortunate to give them, and this is a fruit of the baptism. Even the tax collector who were rejected, they came out to John the Baptist. They are rejected. Tax collectors are traitors. Thank you. They are traitors and they were not liked, they were hated because they collected taxes for the account of the Roman Empire. So they are traitors. So even tax collectors came out to be baptized. And they asked teacher, what should we do? And he responded saying, do not collect any more than you are required to. So this is signifying that every job has a potential of making mistakes and doing wrong things and doing sinful things and also how to maintain integrity, how to maintain righteousness, even in the tax, even in the, in the, in the, in the tasks, even in some of the jobs that are looked down upon. Where is your heart? Where is my heart when I'm doing my job? Where is it? Tax collectors, this was a job. 
maybe people did not have, it was not easy for them to leave, to leave this job. Because if a tax collector leaves his job, what is he going to do? No one is going to hire him because he is a traitor. So it was not easy for a tax collector to leave this job, their job. The same with soldiers. Some of the soldiers asked John the Baptist, what should we do? He replied, do not extort money and do not accuse people falsely. Be content with your pay. Because these are bad things that used to happen. They would collect more money using their, their authority, using their privileges. They would accuse people falsely and they were sometimes asked to do this. We know how uh, many people were asked to accuse our Lord Jesus Christ falsely about things that he said. But he said, when you're doing your job, be content with your pay. Be content, be satisfied. And this is fruits of repentance. So the fruits of repentance here, so the repentance, the act of coming to be baptized meant that I want to be straight. I want to have my heart and my mind and my actions straight before the Lord. Straighten my feelings, straighten my thoughts, straighten my actions. This is a true repentance. To have a change. Repentance means a change. And it was by complete immersion, immersion in the, in the water to signify you have been cleansed. So John the Baptist kept on calling, be clean, come, repent from your sins. So everyone comes, confess their sin. I have sinned, I have sinned, I have sinned. And they express their sins and they are baptized until a certain special person comes to John the Baptist. But he says, you have no sin. Jesus came to John the Baptist to be baptized. He said, but you have no sin. How can I baptize you? I'm not worthy to stoop down and uh, 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 untie your, the straps of your sandals. You have no sin. Those who come to me, I'm preparing the way for you. But he said, allow it. Why was this? Why was Jesus baptized? He was baptized not because he has sins but he baptized to complete the law. He was circumcised to fulfill and complete the law. He was baptized. And also a significant aspect, when Jesus is baptized by John the Baptist, what does this mean? It means he's approving what John the Baptist is, is doing. What this man is doing is right. This is what I want. It's not that he needed to be baptized from sin. And that's why he shouted, John the Baptist, Behold the Lamb of God. Now this man is coming into the water not to let go of his sins. But everyone who let go of their sins in this water, he is going in this water to do what? To carry the sins of the whole world and to offer himself as a sacrifice. He is the Lamb of God. So his, Jesus was baptized to approve what John the Baptist was doing. He was baptized to take away the sins of the people. He was baptized so that we have this wonderful manifestation of the Holy Trinity, the Father, the sound from heaven, and the Holy Spirit like a dove, and the Son present. The Holy Trinity, it's a manifestation of this Holy Trinity, meaning he's approving this work of John the Baptist, and Jesus wants us to continue this baptism or repentance. Now, he said, now who comes after me, baptize you with the Holy, with the Holy Spirit. And Jesus said, anyone in the kingdom, smaller in the kingdom, is greater than John the Baptist. What does this mean? Could mean many could mean different interpretations. Of course, this could also be pointing to our Lord Jesus Christ who is younger than John the Baptist. And also notice that Jesus said, those born among women, but those who are baptized by the Holy Spirit, by water and the Holy Spirit, they are not born of women, but they are born of the Spirit. So anyone, everyone who is baptized by the Spirit is greater meaning it's a greater baptism that is coming. 
And this is a time when a creation becomes new and the Holy Spirit resides in us. And we become temple of the Lord. We become temple of the Holy, of the Holy Spirit. So we are asked to reflect on this. Baptism of John the Baptist, baptism of our Lord Jesus Christ, and maybe this hints this kind of help us understand some of the dialogue that was between our Lord Jesus Christ and Nicodemus when he says, how can a man be born again? Can I go back to my mother womb? Meaning, he, he understood that those who are baptized, they are cleansed. But as a Jewish leader, they acknowledge, I don't have any sin. I don't have it. I don't need to be baptized. Why do I need to be baptized? And this is the ideas of the Jewish, of the Jewish leaders. But he said, no, it's not being going back again. It is admitting. And that's why Jesus, the one, the, 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 like the woes were given to the, not the people, but to the teachers of the law, who took the law of Moses and they cared about how to apply it only from outside not from inside said so the axe is put on the root of the tree fruits where are the fruits where are the fruits of the repentance repentance is a change in the mind that reflect that comes with it a change in actions or a change in the heart that leads to a change in the mind that leads also to a change in my actions so this is a time also for all of us is to review how do I, uh, how am I transformed by this repentance that is offered to us. Repentance is a great mystery. Repentance and confession is a great mystery and a sacrament that is offered to us. Through it, through our readings, we offer repentance. Through our prayers, we offer repentance. We offer repentance to be washed. So when we approach the Lord, we take the sacraments in a worthy way. We take the sacraments in a way that is worthy, meaning that I live a life that reflects my new change, the change that is taking place in my life in terms of my actions. Glory be to God, the Holy Trinity, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, now forever and to the age of all.